Boys and girls, are you ready to go on an adventure? Well, Mrs. Hickman's getting ready and we're going on a whole different trip and we're gonna go halfway across the world on this exciting adventure. So sit up straight and pay attention. And here's Miss Hickman. Hello, I'm so happy to be with you today. And we are studying about Martin and Gracia Burnham. And oh, how the Lord used them. And today we're traveling with them to the country of the Philippines. Yes, you're exactly right. And I had a friend message me who lives in the Philippines. And she said that Miss Gracia has written a book. And so I would love to read that sometime. But I'm so excited about getting there today. Last week we talked about all the preparation that would have to happen in order for them to go to the Philippines. And we talked about the preparation that they even had as children that they didn't know at the time that God was preparing them for a great work, but he was. And I want to encourage you, maybe even today and this week, God is going to have you do a task that he is going to use in a mighty way. He was preparing them for something great. And each task of your life, God is preparing you for his will for your life. And he is trying to mold you and make you into the worker that he needs you to be. So there was a great work to do before they went to the Philippines. What do you think that a family must have to do in order to get the Philippines? That's where we left off last week. What do you think are some things that they have to learn? They have to learn the language yes and um, I, I don't know how to speak that language but they had to study the language and they had to build a home and they had to learn about the people it is so important when you go to a new country to learn about the culture so you can be able to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ and so they had to learn all of those things and of course it was challenging and part of their preparation they went they attended something called jungle camp something called jungle camp in, in, in regards to their preparing to be a missionary. And this is when they were still in America, but they were preparing to be missionaries. And they did this thing called jungle camp. And that's exactly what they sound out. They packed up their bags and they moved to the middle of the jungle for an amount of time. Well, one day they were learning how to like live in the jungle. So they would learn how to make their own food and create their own fire and, and those kinds of things. Well, one day, Miss Gracia got a radio call and said, Everybody must come back to the camp. Get out of the jungle. Get out of the jungle. Get out of the jungle. So her husband was actually away flying on his, he was doing flight training, working on how to fly an airplane. And so she had to pack up everything that they had built out there, got their tent down, gathered up all of their things, had to load it on a raft, and had to um, help row the raft back to camp. Oh, when she got back to camp, whew, she was talking to one of the ladies and she said, Oh my goodness, Miss Sally, you wouldn't believe what I had to do. I had to tear down our tent. I had to pack up all of our belongings. I had to load it all up. I had to put it on a raft and I had to get it across the water because my husband was not there to help me because he was flying an airplane. She said, whew, this preparation to be a missionary is hard. And the lady that she was talking to said, that's good practice. Did you know one time I was in the jungle, the real jungle? I wasn't at missionary training camp. I was in the real jungle being a missionary, and my husband had a heart attack. And we had to fly him to the nearest hospital, of course. So I had to go home and pack up all of our things and row it across the river. All the while, I had children, and I had to take care of them too. And Gracia realized very quickly that this training all had a purpose. And there might be one day where they had to pack up quickly and she learned from this other missionary that it's possible that you have to leave in a hurry. And so she was thankful for that preparation. She said, Miss Sally said, God is preparing you. You know, I was thinking about that and I was thinking about how God prepares us when we don't even expect it. Let me tell you a story really quickly. I was a senior in college, maybe a junior or senior. I was a senior in college. And I had the opportunity, somebody said, I lived in Knoxville, Tennessee at the time, and someone said to me, hey, there's a group of Chinese children <clears throat> that are living in Knoxville. Can you please go teach them some English and a Bible story? And I thought, oh my, sure. This was before I've ever been to China. I didn't know a word of Chinese. I didn't, I, I didn't know anything about it. But I thought, sure, I'll go teach them. 
So I took a little lesson, maybe something like this, and I was prepared to teach them a story of the Bible, maybe teach them a little English. I thought it was going to be one little girl. I walk in and there's an apartment with maybe five or six Chinese children. They had just been in America for three days. Do you think they spoke any English? No English. Did I speak any Chinese? No Chinese. So we played an hour of charades. I would try to act out the story and try to get them to understand. And they would try to tell me if they were understanding. It was the most exciting time. And at the end, they said, please come back and teach us more. And so eventually the Lord led us to lead a translator. And then I had a man who could translate for me in Chinese. And I had the opportunity to teach those children the Bible and a little bit of English. That was before I knew that the Lord was going to call me to be a missionary in China for a time. Maybe about six or eight months later, I got this email in the mail, that, I mean this email in my, on my computer that said, we need a first grade teacher in Lijiang, China. Oh, I thought, oh my goodness. And did you know that at night when I would go to bed and I would think, Lord, I don't want to leave. I have my family here and I, China seems so far away. I can't go to China. When I would close my eyes, I would see those precious little Chinese people that I was teaching on Monday nights. And I would think there's a whole country of these little people that need to hear the gospel. And did you know that was unconscious preparation? That means I wasn't thinking about it when I went to Knoxville, Tennessee and taught those Chinese children. I did not think, oh, well, maybe the Lord one day will have me go to China. I had no idea. But the Lord used those children to put a burden on my heart to reach Chinese children. And then later he allowed me the opportunity to go there. And so I'm saying this young people, just like Miss Garcia had to go through this training, there are things that God is going to put into your life that are going to train you for his purpose for your life. I have a friend who has been in Hickory, North Carolina, and she has worked summer camp at our school and our church, and she was so excited about it. And she did a great job. She worked there for two summers. And then she went off to college, and her college has a camp. And she, she's able now to work at the camp that's at her college because she had training and preparation while she was at home. All I'm saying is that anything that God allows you to do it is preparation. Maybe it's unconscious. Maybe you're not doing it on purpose. But God has a plan. And so it was a busy, busy couple of months for the Burnham family and they were preparing to go. You know, when they decided to go to the Philippines, they had to leave their home. They had to leave their family. They had to leave their vehicles. They had to leave anything that was familiar. Why would somebody do that? Because they realized that following God is more important than any other thing. They realized that following God is more important than having a nice home. Following God is more important than having a nice car and more important than being comfortable. Following God is the most exciting thing you could do. And God had a job for them to do in the Philippines. And young people, I tell you today, God has a job for you to do. Say, Ms. Hickman, what is it? I don't know. But I know that God has a purpose for you. And it is our job to pray and ask God that he will lead us to what he has us to do. The Lord has a job for me to do. Yes, of course, teaching first grade is important and that's a big responsibility. But I'm not just there to teach my first graders how to add and subtract, maybe even multiply. I'm not there to teach my first graders how to learn the alphabet. I have a job to point them to Christ. And that's what this family had a job to do. They had a job to go to the Philippines to point those precious Filipino people to Christ. What is your job? Your job is to point others to Christ. You have a job to do. And oh, how do you think that the Burnhams showed the love of God to these precious Filipino people? Next week, join me and we'll find out how the Lord used these precious people in the country of the Philippines. I'll see you next week.